welcome back to the channel folks. Uh, today is, as you can perhaps see from the video, a follow-up and hopefully a last one on Miss Lily, the uh, imprinted rough grouse. So this is about encounter number 16. I kind of lost count a bit, but it's approximately there. So I just had a uh, chainsaw safety course and the instructor also happened to be a wildlife biologist. Ah. So I explained to him what kind of transpired, including uh, somewhere around visit number six or seven, she come out, and I had just been using the chainsaw. So as an experiment, I fired up the chainsaw, held it within about 18 inches of her, with it running full throttle, and she didn't react. What, you think she's deaf? Uh, I have no idea what her problem is. <laughs> But obviously she has no, I've kind of taken small sticks and tossed them at her, I've fallen a tree near her, and uh, as I explained to him, it's kind of like taking your two-year-old toddler out and trying to run a chainsaw and split wood uh, while he, he, she is unsupervised. <laughs> so she's taken uh, some of the fun of coming out here away because you're I'm afraid of hurting her. <laughs> well, I'm swinging the axe and I'm wondering, is it, is it at all possible that she might jump up on this stump while I'm coming down? You know, uh, she often has been close enough that if I step back without seeing her, that I might step on her. And she's, what, six, seven feet away from, from well, my feet she's, right now. She's about five feet, possibly six yeah. right now. But she can and will come closer. Except I'm here. Because I had the chainsaw within 18 inches, so I was roughly two, two feet, barely more than two feet away from her. And she has actually pecked the end of my boot. <laughs> Telling so, you to back off. <laughs> well, that's it. Apparently the, the biologist says, and I hope I'm getting this right. If not, uh, don't blame him. <laughs> it's your faulty memory. Yeah, well, we're just taking a bit of a break uh, in the chainsaw course, and so there were distractions going on. Anyhow, he said, if they don't have a hatch, by which I believe, you know, eggs, laid their eggs and had a, a brood, that they will imprint. And it's not necessarily short term, Oh, oh. <laughs> if she has a hatch next spring, then she should hopefully be okay. See, but she's... Working her way closer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's well within four feet right now. And, uh, I mean, I can take a, a stick and, and kind of brandish it right in front of her, and she doesn't react. <laughs> you know, uh... Don't torture her. Well, I'm not torturing her because it doesn't bother her even in the little bit. Well, she's looking at it, but... Well, she's looking at it. She didn't strike me as being upset because I wouldn't do that. But it looks like she just has absolutely no fear of anything. I mean, there I can't think of a human or an animal that that would not be upset with a full full running chainsaw <laughs> within 18 inches. I mean... I don't like it. <laughs> I just can't see that people, you know, critters, whatever, you know, it's just unnatural. Anyhow, she's going through some kind of mental trauma, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, we don't have any Rough grouse psychiatrist uh, on the standby. In, in the area. <laughs> so I don't know. I get quite upset with her at times because it's just 
very annoying and it takes away the fun and I still have work in this area to do. I've already identified, you know, a number of oaks that are here as seedlings and really need to get, so. You want to free, let more light in. Yeah. 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 Give them, give them more sunshine. But you don't want to drop a tree on a lily. Well, I swear there's times I, <laughs> it becomes almost tempting, but then the, my normal, more sensible self says that, that would not be a nice thing to do. And so the secret may be if we can get her imprinted on you. <laughs> Thanks. And you can come out and babysit while I work. I can distract her. <laughs> you, you can become the, the babysitter <laughs> with our rough uh, toddler. Lead her off out of the way. Yes. Yeah, I could practically reach out and touch her here. Except my arms are short. Hopefully the audio will pick up her little murp. -er. And the other thing that I observed for the biologist, she never flies in my sight. She walks. She walks in. She walks away. She she walks entirely. Uh, the only thing is, uh, I did see her trying to balance on a branch and she gave her wings a little flap, I think more for balance than anything. She, uh, she appears totally unhurt. There's no sign of missing feathers or anything like that. So I don't think it's injury related. <laughs> So, oh. I honestly don't know what is... She's coming for you, Michael. Yep, coming for me, not you. <laughs> but it's... But it's disconcerting that she's... she's if she didn't print it on me and was afraid of you, I would feel a little better. But it almost looks like possibly any human. Well, uh, it could just be because I'm here with you. Well, it could be. If, if it is indeed a she, she may be very annoyed to find out I have a wife. <laughs> You've been keeping Sorry, that honey. a secret, have you? <laughs> If you're still around in another year, I'll uh, uh, maybe seek a divorce or something. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you're cute, Lily. Yeah, she looks like she wants to come right over. <laughs> She's heading for your foot. Working her way around. So what, she's a little over 12 inches away, about 16, 18 inches right there. She from your, was a from bit, your foot, yeah. She was a bit closer <laughs> there for a moment. And she chickened out. No, she rough gross out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Eek! She's getting close to me. If she was a chicken, she would have chickened out. <laughs> You're not going to come peck me and try and chase me away from him, are you? Huh? You're getting mighty handy. Yep. I could reach out and touch her. I don't think I will, but I could. <laughs> what you want, lady? Assuming you are a lady. Well, that's the only thing the biologist could suggest is... It was a female that didn't have a, a brood this year. Yeah. She's pretty. <laughs> oh, 
Here she comes, Michael. Well, and that's the thing. You never know. It's not like she's predictable. She'll hit in a direction, turn, go back, or veer off, or whatever. Just kind of gradually working her way closer. Well. <laughs> well, Miss Lily. That's right. My feet are going to sleep from squatting down here. Between uh, two videos, you certainly have your 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> Not sure what you're going to do with it, but you got it. <laughs> right. Maybe you can go on TikTok or something. <laughs> I've talked to her granddaughter about that one. <laughs> yes. Well, and that's, that's the story of Lily at this time. Uh, <laughs> if we happen to get a radical change, uh, we'll certainly uh, bring it out for you. Uh, but this happens, this can happen twice a day. <laughs> every time you're in this area of the woodlot. <laughs> well, not every time. There were two days in a row she missed and I was almost hopeful that we had separated but unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and she is back, mm -hmm. and uh, anyhow, we'll make the best of it somehow. It sounds like she's right behind my feet. I don't want to step back. You see, that's, <laughs> that's the problem. I can hear her rustling. Yeah. <laughs> anyhow, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, <laughs> see you on the next video. She is practically, <laughs> <laughs> practically ready to climb up my back. <laughs> and uh, please share, uh, I think. There should be lots of people interested in this. Anyhow, and like, and catch you in the next video. Stay safe. And if you have had a similar experience or have anything to add to the what's going on here, we'd love to hear from you. Right. Please comment. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>